Hello, I'm Dr. Stephen Hart and I'm a trainer at Concept. I'm a professor of psychology at Simon Fraser University. My background is in clinical and forensic psychology. My area of specialty is violence risk assessment and management. I started to specialize in clinical forensic psychology when I was a graduate student um, training at University of British Columbia and uh, started to work with men who'd been convicted of offenses, men who were in prison and so forth, doing treatment and doing assessments. And then subsequently um, started to do work in a wide variety of uh, settings, including law enforcement and workplace settings, looking at the issue of violence risk and how we identify people who have problems with violence and the ways that we could try to prevent violence. As an academic, the work that I do is really designed to try to help people who are frontline practitioners. So whether they're in mental health or criminal justice or human resources, it doesn't really matter. Um, all that work is designed to try to help people do their job more effectively and more efficiently. Um, for me, the big thing is to try to make sure that the knowledge that we generate, that the procedures that we develop are designed to be incorporated into frontline use. Um, as a practitioner, I try to make sure that I um, spend as much time as possible actually doing violence risk assessment. Uh, my personal view is it's not a really good idea to try to develop procedures or to try to tell people what to do if you don't have experience doing it yourself. So I try to make sure that I get as much experience as possible in a wide range of different areas. So I get to work in a number of di different settings around the world and, and I find that to be um, immensely useful in the work that I do as an academic. One of the things that I think is most important about uh, training with respect to violence is to make sure that uh, we have some fundamental concepts straight. So to me, I kind of take a top-down approach to learning, which is let's start with some big ideas, get those straight, and then once we get those key concepts and some key principles in place, then the details kind of fall into place. So I try to start by making sure that we've got terms and concepts clear. That's the first thing. Then the second thing is to try to talk about um, principles for practice in a good general level so that we get an idea about the flow of our work and what we're trying to accomplish, goals, objectives, procedures. And then finally, work on trying to develop specific practice skills so that when we can go ahead and do violence risk assessment or violence risk management, that we feel like we've got our thinking straight. I guess that's the way I think about it is, you know, the, the whole process of teaching and the process of learning really goes heart to head to hands. We start with trying to get our attitudes and our awareness in place and then we try to get our thinking straight in line with those values and then we try to make sure that what we do is already steered in the right direction um, with our heart and our heads. Um, you know, professionally, when I go around the world, um, I get to travel to all these wonderful places and I meet great colleagues. Unfortunately, most of the time I go to prison or I go to jail um, and I go to a forensic hospital. So I'm in secure locations, often in remote parts of the world. But it's fascinating to me for a couple of reasons. One of them is um, you get to meet some incredible diversity of patients and offenders and, and uh, amazing experiences for me, like I remember once going to New Zealand and going to a forensic psychiatric hospital and having a patient, a man with uh, chronic schizophrenia who had um, killed his family and wanted to come over and he got closer and closer to me and then he said to me, Hangi, which I didn't have any clue what that meant, but it's the New, it's the New Zealand traditional Maori uh, greeting, which is to bump foreheads and touch noses and to share breath with each other. And that's what you do to show that um, you're with somebody and trusting of them, the same way that we would shake hands and show that we mean people no harm. But, um, you know, for me, that was a rather unusual experience. Similarly, going to Finland, uh, for example, to a maximum secure facility where uh, we went and sat in a sauna all night, which in Finland involves drinking mass quantities of alcohol and being naked, including with your forensic patients. To me, that was something that was actually kind of inconceivable, but in Finland, it would be impossible to rehabilitate somebody and 
to make them feel part of society again unless you were willing to partake in those kinds of um, socially, culturally important rituals. And I started to realize that those things are critical to the work that we do, that that cultural overlay, those different practices around the world, that's what helps you understand what it is to be a human being and that we've got to keep that in part of the work we do. Well, I guess today's workshop was an excellent example uh, for me. Got a chance to hear from people working in a variety of different places, uh, from um, psychiatric hospitals, civil and forensic, to workplace settings, to higher education settings. And everybody's struggling to deal with this problem of how do I identify people who might be a violence risk? How do we deal with them? How are we supposed to manage this? How are we supposed to do our best for people um, and try to help them through life problems while at the same time making sure that they don't commit violence that would not only hurt themselves but hurt other people as well. And it's amazing to me when I see people who have the same ideas and the same values that I do and talk about something using different language or they're doing different concepts and I learn different ways to, to speak about the same problems. I learn different ways to handle the same problems at a more general level. It's like getting out of my field. It's like getting out of that parochial field where I do my work and trying to find a universal way, a, a much more generalizable way of having those discussions. And to me, it makes me feel much more uh, literate and much more uh, comfortable dealing with people from really diverse backgrounds and again, from many different cultures from around the world. I think for, for me, actually, outside of work, my, my life is just my family and, and my chance to sp spend time with my daughter and my son and my wife and, uh, and all the other members of my extended family. So um, that's really it. Uh, I, I love to read books and the only good thing about traveling for me is that I actually get a chance on airplanes or sitting in airport terminals or doing other things to actually catch up on my reading. And I try to get my reading as far away from my work as possible. You know, in my private practice in the business that we operate, Protect International, one of the things that we do is obviously we do training, but um, for me, the training is one part of the job and the other parts are to actually go out and do this work in the field. So we do assessments. We also help other people do their assessments. We support them. We provide support services to help them do violence triage or violence risk assessment. We help places develop policies and procedures or review their own practices so that we can try to help them improve their agencies. And you know, uh, we also do consultation or research. Putting all those things together for me, it makes me feel like I'm not over-focusing or uh, training too hard in one area, over-training and losing sight of the big picture about how we deal with this problem of violence and violence prevention in society more broadly. <laughs>